This is Chuck Huber, the voice of Android 17. You're listening to Anime Seekers. You better be, or I'm coming for you. Dragon of the Darkness, flame! Toku Secrets is a podcast run by the Anime Secrets website. Check us out at AnimeSecrets.org for more anime, video game, tokusatsu content. Remember to follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts today. Hey guys, I'm Hunter Dino. I'm your pink Dino Fury Power Ranger and your red Cosmic Fury Power Ranger, and you're listening to Toku Secrets Podcast. Welcome to Toku Secrets. Join us as we journey into the marvelous world of Super Sentai, Kamen Rider, Power Rangers, and many other Tokusatsu. Get ready for the adventure of a lifetime. It's Morphin Time! Link to the Morphin. I'm Nathan Desai, the dazzling adventurer, Boken Silk. And I'm Ridwan Merson, Gokai Red. And, and we're, we're Token Token Secrets. Secrets. What's up, guys? Uh, Token Secrets Podcast here, uh, once again, to uh, continue our uh, little mini-series uh, on uh, our review of The Return, that uh, comic series that uh, we uh, yesterday we did issue number one, and today Riz and I are continuing with issue number two, so pretty self-explanatory. Uh for those who uh, did not check out that uh, that previous podcast, just to give you uh, a brief, uh, you know, update. Um, so we're reviewing this little uh, mini series of comics. It's four issues long. It was uh, it was uh, pretty much announced like last year to be kind of like a culmination of the 30th anniversary of Power Rangers, and it's a comic. Um, revolving around the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the original six, in a, uh, I guess, alternate continuity. And the reason why it really stands out is because it revolves heavily around Kimberly, and one of the writers was uh, Amy Jo Johnson herself. So, um, yeah, that's the uh, that's the story behind this. And if you guys want to, uh, you know, get the update on, you know, what happened in issue one, go ahead and check out that podcast before you check out this one. So uh, with that said, uh, we can jump right in. But uh, to kind of, uh, so this issue naturally picks up where the uh, previous one left off. Um, So the previous one ended with uh, Trini's mysterious niece, supposedly, we're gonna find out who she really is uh, in this comic. Uh, Her name was Selena and she approached Kimberly who's like kind of gone into like, uh, some who's now kind of living a new life not necessarily in seclusion but pretty much cut off from the rest of the team uh she's living somewhere in canada under a new name and the comic opens up in a flashback uh kimberly is telling selena the story of uh like what happened 22 years ago which um the previous comic established that 22 years ago the power rangers they went to the moon they defeated Lord Zed and Rita, and then they decided to disband. It was heavily implied that Tommy was killed during that fight. And here we actually see exactly what happened. Um, At some point uh, prior to this, um, the uh, Lord Zed and Rita, you know, all their forces. So pretty much everyone from the uh, main villain cast is there. You got Lord Zed, you got Rita, um, Goldar and uh, Scorpina are there as well. Um, Babu and Squat, Finster, pretty much the whole gang there, except uh, except Rita Revolto. But considering Which Tommy, it's kind of sad because Rita should have been here. Dang it! Well, yeah, but I guess the implication is that I mean Rita was like a season three villain, so yeah. and there you Tommy's still having his Green Ranger powers, and the Rangers have their Dino Zords. He would just feel kind of weird because I mean all these <laughs> villains, with the exception of Lord Zed, who was original. They all came from Jew Ranger, so having a Ranger who was brought from Kaku Ranger would just feel weird. Um, yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, um, the Rangers. Um, so Jason, Zach, and Billy were um, uh, Jason, Zach, Billy, and Trini. I'm sorry, were uh, attacking the Moon Base with their Zords. Um, you know, they had to fight off a lot of putties, and Vincer also sent like a huge swarm of very familiar-looking monsters at them like you know we got monsters like uh pudgy pig the king sphinx uh the frankenstein monster uh terror toad 
Shell Shock, Minotaur, uh, that genie monster. I can't remember what his name was. Uh, this this one unicorn monster and that lion chimera like monster again. I I recognize all these monsters because we just recently reviewed G Ranger. I just can't remember what they were called in Power Rangers. Yeah, um, it's hard to remember because I watched Z Ranger after watching the MMPR for our podcast, so a little bit difficult. Yeah. But uh, they, they were actually uh, doing a diversion because uh, the Power Rangers themselves, uh, so they're doing a diversion while Kimberly and Tommy, Tommy has his Green Ranger powers, um, they have this uh, bomb called the Benevolator, which is not a bomb to kill people, but it's basically, it, it's kind of similar to the uh, Z-Wave in, uh, from, um, from a Power Rangers in Space, where when it explodes, it's going to unleash like a big wave of good, pure energy that's going to like counter the dark energy. And it's going to basically, okay, it would probably destroy, maybe it would destroy Goldar, Vinster, and like Babu and all those people, but it probably would have turned uh, um, Rita, Zed, and maybe Scorpina, I don't know, uh, good, like it did at the end of Power Rangers in Space. But unfortunately, we're not going to be able to figure out what would have happened because, uh, unfortunately, uh, Rita figures out when um, what happened when Squat discovers them. And while getting into a fight with Tommy, uh, she causes a malfunction in the in the benevolator. Uh, Kimberly kills Rita when she has uh, with her power bow when Rita has Tommy cornered. And pretty much what has to happen is that someone has to set off the bomb so that it'll destroy the whole base. And Kimberly and Tommy have this really big emotional moment where it's revealed that they're married. So I kind of made a mistake in the previous podcast where it was implied that she was engaged to somebody else. No, she, she was actually married to Tommy at this point. Yeah. Um, and um tommy is insisting that she has to stick that she has to leave because she can't she can't stay on earth to set the bomb off and it it's i could put two and two together like K kimberly is pregnant like like it, it doesn't take a genius to figure that out good job billy yeah and so the other rangers retreat tommy sets off the bomb and it destroys the base it kills rita and zed and you know the rangers all return home and you know they celebrate except tommy was still there and he he got killed in the explosion which leaves everyone devastated then we cut back to uh the present where kimberly is telling selena why she why she gave up being a power ranger Selena tries to convince her to uh, to um, to return, but of course Kimberly says no. And then Selena reveals herself, you know, after you know, after kind of uh, talking with um, Kimberly for a little bit, she transforms into this new sorceress villain who looks. She's not Rita, but she's very much kind of similar to Rita, and she's wielding Rita's magic wand. We don't know her name yet, but she's bait. But she gets into a fight with Kimberly. Kimberly tries to morph, but she hesitates for a second. And before she can complete the morphing sequence, um, um, the uh, the villain pretty much just disables her and you know knocks her out. And the episode and the issue ends with someone arriving back home. Uh, the villainess thought that uh, it was actually um, a a secret lover that Kimberly had, but it actually turns out to be uh, this uh, little girl who calls her, who's calling Kimberly mom. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And that's yeah. the issue. I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's a big ending right there for many reasons that we'll talk about in the next issue. But yeah, so Nate, what do you think of this issue? Um, I, I liked, uh, I mean, the whole flashback sequence with like, you know, the action scene was, you know, absolutely amazing. Like, you know, it was just cool to, um, you know, it was just cool seeing like, you know, the Megazord fights, you know, like, well, not the Megazords because they don't form the Megazord, but like the Dinozords fighting Goldar. 
I really liked how they showed all these giant monsters that are like throwbacks to the uh, original, um, you know, some of the original monsters that we saw in uh, Power Rangers, because I always like those little details. Um, and yeah, I mean, aside from that, I mean, it, the whole scene where like, you know, they storm the base and they try to come up with a way to destroy it. I mean, it felt very reminiscent of like, uh, I, I'm not sure if this was an inspiration or not, but it felt very reminiscent of Carl Dutton's audio drama. Like it felt like one of those gritty fights. And for those who don't know what we're talking about, just go back and check out our first two podcasts on Carl Dutton's audio drama. Like the fight felt a lot, a lot grittier, not someone from like the TV show, but from the audio drama. Yeah, there's a lot of similarities we're going to find between the audio drama and this comic line specifically. Um, it's just a lot more emotional. Like, you can see in one panel Kimberly's absolute pain and agony when she realizes Tommy didn't make it. And, I mean, it really, it felt bad seeing her face like that. Like, she's so distraught while... You know, Trini's hugging Billy in the background, Jason and Sakura celebrating the defeat of Rita and Zed. But, you know, um, it just kind of, it sucks knowing, you know, she lost her lover and she has nothing else to live for. And there's a small detail I actually like that they preserved across the entire comic line. And that's wherever the... um, Wherever the explosion happened on the moon, that part of the moon is now kind of exploded out of it. So pieces of the moon are orbiting above where it blew off. So it's not a full perfect circle like it should be. Yep. And I just like seeing in the background of these like different scenes. Um, they have like photographs. There was even an issue one. And there's like just photos of them back in the nineties as teenagers at the youth bar hanging out, like Trini and Kimberly and stuff. And so you see the photos throughout Kimberly's apartment or house or whatever it is. And it just kind of really calls back to our nostalgia while also letting us as the fans 30 years later grow with the story. Because, you know, something I think I mentioned in the Carl Dutton audio drama review is that was a story meant for us. Those people who have been around for, you know, 20, 30 years, depending on how old you are. And, you know, we're, we're all pirates or fans, but we're not like the goofy fans that are going to get, like, just excited seeing heroes and spandex. We need a little bit more depth now. And I think we're getting that here because now we're getting real trauma. And, I mean, I'm not going to spoil anything, Nate, but the trauma you're seeing here is only just the beginning. It gets... This entire comic line gets a lot more dark as we go along. So Mm -hmm. I I just think that they do a fantastic job of going through all that. And yeah. And I also just like seeing all those old bosses, like the Monster of the Weeks be brought back for scenes. And they're seen throughout the comic fighting and destroying. Um... In fact, I don't know if I'm seeing it correctly, but I think in one scene, you can actually see Putty's literally destroying the Tyrannosaurus Rex Zord, like his chest plates falling off. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I didn't pay attention to that detail, but I wouldn't be surprised. That still would have... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm definitely looking at it since I'm looking at it in real time. Yeah, Yeah, that's... Pretty brutal, actually. Yeah, so, I mean, you're seeing our childhood reimagined and things that we thought were, well, okay, they were never safe because, obviously, if you watch Power Rangers, you know we replaced these Zords with the Thunder Zords in Season 2. But still, seeing putties that capable of destroying the Zords because they're overwhelmed by how many forces Rita and Seth have, it's a big deal. Yeah, the only time that stuff like that has ever happened in the show, I can remember two times. uh, Like, there was one in Power Rangers in Space uh, during uh, Countdown to Destruction where the Mega Winger, that Zane Zord, gets 
destroyed kind of i mean it's debatable over what happened to the mega winger but it gets critically damaged by just fighters that the quantrons are using which how could the big mega winger be taken down by just a few like minor fighters well when you have like uh, like 500 zillion fighters shooting at you you're going to get overwhelmed and the same thing with uh the uh in the lost galaxy finale there's um a scene where those two automatic megazords the centaurus and stratoforce megazords are trying to defend terra venture and all these sting wingers just pile all over them and then like detonate bombs that are attached to them and that destroys them like so seeing zords get taken down by like regular foot soldiers like that stuff that's usually just reserved for like final episodes of seasons and it's brutal yeah definitely um so one other detail i like in here is so I, we already know this is an alternate continuity but a small detail that they didn't have to put in here that they did that I liked was, so in the panel where we have all the Monster of the Weeks and the Putties fighting the uh, Sabertooth Tiger, you can see Bandora Palace in the background, but it's not just Bandora Palace in the background, there's, in the, there's more buildings now. So this tells me that maybe Rita and Zed have been there for a lot longer fighting the Rangers and they've been building up their forces and building up maybe like a factory or building up some kind of like launch facility or something because to me that looks like a launch pad that I'm looking at in the background I don't know maybe it's my aerospace background picking in but definitely I'm seeing something there and that detail it, you don't see that detail in the series so we can only infer that this is definitely a different timeline, different alternate universe or whatever. And that attention to detail is really awesome that they're doing stuff like that to kind of distinguish this moon base from the other moon base. Yeah, definitely. And maybe that's where they, uh, I don't know, maybe they were trying to like build up Serpent Terror or something. I mean, yeah. that's the only thing I could think of. That's possible. And I still want to know after reading SC2, how did Alpha and Zordon go? Like, what what was the thing that actually destroyed them? Yeah, I'm curious about that too. That's the question that will carry on for a little while, but I, I just want to bring that uh, question back to uh, your attention so that way in the next couple of issues we can keep track of it. And I, I think the more I think about it, like, I... and this isn't really me having any spoilers from the next one because I've done a pretty good job at avoiding spoilers, but I think the detail that I may have missed, but the more I think about it, looking back at it is that um, the, the room where Tommy and Kimberly try to plant the benevolator was clearly a bedroom. And Rita was like entering it saying like, wakey, wakey, my little, like almost as if like she and Lord Zed have a child I think it's probably pretty obvious that Selena is probably the child, but I mean, but we could just go over that in the next issue. We'll talk about that in issue three. Yeah. But I mean, one way or another, I mean, yeah, I mean, at least it probably won't be uh, Rita and Zed's actual child in Power Rangers. And no, I'm not talking about a uh, Kai or whatever his name was in a, uh, in, um, uh, Geo Ranger. I'm talking about Thrax from Operation. We don't Ranger. talk about Thrax. I know. Yeah, but uh, no, this is definitely just getting more nitty gritty and just um, it's really the Power Rangers that fans have been asking for for years to get something like this, and we're finally getting it. Yep. And I'm hoping, you know, the it continues this way for quite a while. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do we have anything else we want to say? No, we are officially halfway through the Return series. Uh, this is a four-issue four limited run. So, Nate, do you have anything, predictions of things that you might expect or things you're thinking might happen in the last half, now that you've seen these two? 
Well, I know that Selena is probably going to have some type of connection to Rita and Zed. Uh, I'm just hoping that we get more like information on like uh, how Zordon and Alpha went out. And I definitely, I, I have a feeling that Tommy is probably going to come back some way. Just like, just because I mean, if, if there's one thing that I've kind of learned in uh, any Tokusatsu, whether it be Power Rangers or Super Sentai, it's that unless you see an actual dead body or you actually see somebody get stabbed or killed. You can't just automatically assume that they're dead. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, but yeah, I'm definitely intrigued by this, and I definitely look forward to uh, checking out issue three. Awesome. And uh, yeah, that wraps this up. Uh, we'll see you guys next time when we do uh, issue three, which will be posted tomorrow, and uh, then we'll do uh, um, issue four the day after that. Uh, Hope you guys are enjoying this little mini series and uh, let us know if uh, you do enjoy this because uh, who knows, maybe at some point, especially, you know, possibly to honor the line being uh, discontinued by uh, being discontinued very soon. Uh, we might actually do more uh, stuff based on the boom comics just to pay some respects to that medium because they seem to be pretty awesome. So yeah, uh, we will definitely consider that if you guys enjoy this series, but uh yeah, uh, be sure to check out our uh, review of season uh, of issue three, I'm sorry, which will be a dropping tomorrow. But until then, bye for now. If you enjoyed listening to the Tokyo Secrets podcast, please check us out at AnimeSecrets.org and follow us on all our social media pages such as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also feel free to check out our other podcasts, including Anime Declassified and The Jedi Squadron. You can also leave us any feedback you'd like to offer us directly on our website. If you're listening to this on Spotify or iTunes, we thank you so much, and please leave us a rating out of five stars. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. If you're not already subscribed, and leave any comments down below, as we love to take the time to read comments left on our channel and give our fans, you know, shoutouts. If you have any seasons of Super Sentai, Power Rangers, or other tokusatsu shows that you'd like for us to check out, please don't hesitate to say so in your feedback. With all that said, we thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our podcast, and we will see you next time as we continue our never-ending journey through the world of Tokusatsu. But until that time, you all stay safe, we love you, and may the power protect you.